So this is a quick video on how to import NWEA map data using the M2 roster file template provided on the website. So you probably wouldn't be clicking this link if you didn't know what NWEA map testing was and be responsible for importing the data to begin with. But in case you don't, the NWEA assessments are measures of academic progress. These computerized tests are adaptive and they're offered in reading, language usage, mathematics, and when taking a map test, the difficulty of each question is based on how well a student answers all the previous questions and every time the student has ever taken the test before. As a result, somehow all of this student data needs to get into map and every quarter, the entire uh, database needs to be updated to reflect changes in teachers, changes in students, and changes in classes. So the web address that you go to is going to be specific to your school. It's a private subdomain that's assigned to the mapnwea.org address. The rest of the path should be the same. When you log into the system, your login information would also be in the upper portion of this page, probably your email. That portion I've blocked out in order not to have any school information in this video. If you have permission to do this and you would need to be set up as someone who could import profiles, then down at the bottom of this page you should see a link that says templates and beneath that roster file template. Roster file templates are again only available to those that are authorized to import profiles. When you click on the link, it will then start downloading. Most browsers will indicate when the download completes. Now at this point you're going to go ahead and open your document. If you're using Chrome, it'll put it down in the lower left hand corner of your screen. If you're using Firefox, it has a small interface in the upper right hand corner of the screen. If you're using Internet Explorer, it puts it onto your downloads. Um, no matter what type of browser you're running, there should be some place that you can click and open it. Now, if you don't have a commercial spreadsheet package, you could actually do this in Google Sheets. Uh, I recommend doing it in Excel 2010 or 2013. For the sake of this video, we're going to use Excel 2013. So anyways, once you open this up, you're going to go ahead and enable editing. This is going to allow us to make the changes that we need to make because a lot has to be removed from the sheet. Then you're going to click on Combined Import, and this tab is where we're going to put in the information that's going to go into Map. So we're going to do this import a couple times. Uh, the first time we do it, we're going to just bring it in and I'll show you how to make a line item in the file. The second time, we're going to talk about how to make some of this data easier to fill in because each time you add a student, you're going to have to add a corresponding teacher, which means the same teacher is going to be put in 32 times. If they have six classes during the day, you're going to be putting in that teacher's name over 100 times. In the case where you're getting your information from a school system or power school, you may not have all the fields that you need. In some cases, it's as easy as copying the field down the column, but in other cases, we're going to want to use a formula to make the job of entering all this data easier. The third time we do the import, we're going to talk about some ways that you can organize your classes when you put them into this file in a systematic way that will make this data easier to access later for you should uh, a teacher need to get the information and do something with it. For instance, putting the period into the class name and creating a standardized method for naming the classes in order to separate them by grade level or topic. So now we have our file open. When you go to the second tab, Combined Import, this is going to have the basic layout for uh, any information that you would be bringing into MAP. While there are ways of doing partial imports, essentially they all follow this basic structure. And when you do a partial import, you raise the chance that you're going to create duplicate records, 
or that you're going to put a student in twice or, or any number of other problems. So I like to do a full roster import each time and simply pull from a spreadsheet that I've generated uh, rostering in of all of my students and all of my teachers and all of my classes. This guarantees that everything's on one page, that the class names are standardized, and that I haven't put in a student under two different IDs with two different names. It sounds like that's a hard thing to do. It's actually very easy, especially when you get names uh, that are more difficult, and it becomes harder to tell the difference between a first name and a middle name and a last name. So. Uh, what we can do is let's go ahead and we are going to, in this case, add a record manually. So in this case, we have a student who is in Blissville High. Uh, the instructor has only ever had one ID. They're employed by us, so we will put in the instructor's ID with no previous ID. We're going to put in the instructor's last name, Jones, his first name, Jack, and we'll make his middle initial C. The username has to be unique, but I really recommend that you use the school email for your teachers to do this. And since you probably are not going to have teachers with the same email at the same school, this becomes a very easy way of creating a unique ID. Uh, it also makes it easier for the teachers to remember because then they can simply log into MAP using their email address. For the class name, we're going to talk about this later because you may definitely want to put in period one, period two. You might want to make uh, differentiation between your elementary, middle, or high for reporting purposes, but the class name is only a single field. Um, we put in our previous student ID. This could be generated if you had a student test who did not have an ID at the time and you get their ID, you need to go ahead and change over to it. Otherwise, you're only going to use the student ID field. And then we put in the student's name, Heath Christopher. And the student's middle name can be either his initial or his name. We're going to put in a student date of birth as 4-13-1999. That would make him a 10th grader. Whoops. Let me go ahead and correct this. Uh, that that would make him a 10th grader. We're going to make him male, put him in the 10th grade, and we're going to designate his ethnic group as white. Now, something about that is when you're uh, when you're doing these records, the gray part at the bottom that gives you the instructions needs to be removed before you do the import, and you can just delete that out. Keep in mind, you'll also generally delete rows 2 through 8, which contain the sample records. So obviously, you're not going to enter these students in one student at a time. Uh, you would have to enter that student one time for every class they had and then enter the teacher one time for every student in their classes. You'd end up doing something like 2,500 rows of data. Completely impossible task. So the next question becomes, can you copy and paste from another spreadsheet? And the answer is absolutely yes. Can you create an export that matches this format and then import it into MAP? Not so much. It's not that you can't, but if there's any mistakes in there, it's not going to go in. My recommendation is you open both sheets and you copy and paste over and you check over the data before you import it. Well, you can reconcile errors in MAP and you can fix little things like, well, you know, MAP says white and we use C for Caucasian and we need to resolve that. MAP will do that. But you have to be consistent within the same file, which means if you put a student in twice and have two different numbers for that student, you're going to get stopped before you begin. It's going to invalidate the import and you're going to have to start the whole process over. So now let's talk about some methods for building your missing data, cases where you don't get the information you need from PowerSchool or your school system, but still need to be able to import users into MAP. 
there are actually some easy ways that you can do this without a lot of trouble. Scenario one, PowerSchool gives you a name, but you do not have a login or email for your NWEA import. The left, right, and mid functions are something that you could use. I've created this formula using the left function to grab J from Jack and Heath, my last name. This then built an email, which I'm using as my login name. Grabbing the sizing handle and dragging it down the column will copy the formula, automatically adjusting for the new row. Now I have an entire column with this field populated, even though I might not have been able to get this information from PowerSchool. Now, this isn't necessarily going to be the case, but keep in mind that things like email, you may not be using your school's email, and each user may have their own. In, in this case, you would have to find another way to do the emails, but could still make a standardized login name. Otherwise, we can simply use the copy feature to copy over to the other column. Here's another scenario. PowerSchool gives you a name, but the IDs are all wrong or inconsistent. VLOOKUPs allow you to look up data in another table and then plug in the information that you have there. Assume for a second we have a table called name table. The formula you just saw would also give you an email address. It could also find an ID or find a login name. We can then copy the same way we did before and it will automatically adjust the formula. Like I said, for this to work, you will need a name table. In our case, we have an index value that's last name first, so it's unique. The last name, the first name, and our fourth column is the email. The last part of the VLOOKUP where you write true, that's for an exact match. And that's important because you don't want to get bad data. So let's talk about option three. Now, if you have a school that has a system that's capable of doing export templates, you can make a template uh, that exports something in the exact same order as what you need to bring in the map. And I recommend you do that anyways, even if you're manually copying over the data, because the closer the data you export is to the data you're putting in, the better you're going to be and the less work you're going to have to do. That said, an autumn an automated and unsupervised process needs to be perfect. It needs to be perfect every time. And the one thing that I would caution you about is if you're exporting this data and then having it go to a flat file and just grabbing it blindly and putting it into the system without any type of oversight, the chances of you putting in the wrong data is very high. And when you do have a file that fails, you're going to spend a lot of time trying to hunt down your problem and fix it. But more importantly, if you have bad data and it doesn't fail, you're going to have a very, very hard time finding that data, and it is going to mess up your reporting, it's going to mess up your classes, and basically to fix it, you're going to have to remove all of your student data and start over. Removing things like an individual class that was imported wrong is incredibly difficult it, and requires removing each student individually. Um, it, it's essentially time prohibitive and typically the best solution is to go back to your original data and re-import re with the roster file again in order to make sure that you're not creating duplicates or creating classes that don't exist. Something else I'd like to mention is if you're naming a class for import in the map, since your classroom field is the only really customizable method of segmenting your reports, you should use a format like the following for class names and be consistent in any scheme you use. This will facilitate not combining classes from different periods when you import them. Otherwise, two classes with the same name will show up and report together. And you may want to separate two classes that, while the same name, have different level children. Since there is no field for period, 
this would be your only opportunity to divide classes this way. So I'm back in the interface that we were using in the beginning of this video. So now the fun part. Go ahead and go into Import Profiles. And we're going to go in and we want to start the import. And now you're going to tell it you want to do the combined file. Set your term. If you make a mistake and you wanted to wipe all student records, replace all existing data would let you do that. For now, we don't want to. We're going to go through and we're going to choose the file that we created. Now we click Next. This is going to give us a preview of the data. We just generally make sure it goes into the right columns. And now we can go ahead and start the import. Now, I've gone ahead and lowered the resolution in this and blurred it. Uh, the idea behind this wasn't to show any type of personal or private information. But if you're using the interface, you should be able to generally match up the buttons and the interface with where you are. Now, when we went in, we found errors. And so we're going to go ahead and resolve those. We do it by clicking on the link. And it turns out that we listed W. And it says, what does W mean? We say white. It says you've also listed a P. What does P mean? Well, that's Pacific Islander. You also listed a B. What does B mean? And we go in and say this is African American or black. And we click on that. Errors are always counted per column. In this case, all of our errors were related to race. And it will systematically replace each of those in the data. Now we go back and we return to our summary. And since there are no errors, we can now post valid records. Click OK. And it will now commit this to the database, posting all valid data. All imports, good and bad, will go into your history so you can see when other users import data as well. So that's it. Uh, hopefully this will help you import your data, keep your data cleaner, and get more use out of it once it's in MAP. I may do some additional videos later that talk about uh, how to manage testing, etc. Uh, but for now, that concludes this lesson. My name's Jack Heath, and uh, have a good day.